Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. Right, you ready for the word? Okay, and what have I not completed? Pastor, you've been preaching about this for six weeks and you still have not told us how to overcome it. You've been telling us what temptation is, okay? You've got to know where you're at to know where you're going to go. See, that's why people don't want to know where they're at. They come to church and all they want to go know is, tell me where to go. And then people preach and say, oh, one day you will. You will do this, and you will do that, and you will conquer. You will have a great business. You're going to have a great marriage. Ooh, hallelujah. Oh, and you will fly over the seas, and you will conquer, and you're going to be a millionaire. Oh, a millionaire. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, and you will, and one day you will, and one day, and one day, and one day, and one day, and one day. And one day. And one day. So when you listen to other preach, preachers, listen to how they speak. It's a pie in the sky. It's a carrot. If you're lost and you don't know where to go and you phone and you say, please help me. I need to get to your place. The first question they ask is, Are you hearing me? But people don't like the where are you. You've got to know where you are to know where you need to, to go. That's why he says in 1 John 1 verse 9, if you confess your sin, you you, you've got to start knowing where you're at. Otherwise, you don't. That's the watch part of the prayer. He says, watch and pray. You've got to know. You've got to be aware. How do you know what you need to conquer if you don't know what you need to conquer? And then how do you know you've conquered? Are you hearing me here today? Okay, so, based on that, we've been looking at the temptations, and I, I don't want to go through all the last things. Otherwise, we're not, we, we, I'm not going to finish again. Okay, so I'm not going to summarize it. Go to last week's message, the last time I spoke about this, lead us not part three, go into that. And once again, when it comes to temptation, it's the temptation of not doing the word. So we looked at the first temptation, where we speak about the quick fix, where quickly turn these, we want a quick miracle, turn these, these stones, turn them into bread. But we see that Jesus prayed in John 17, verse 15, he says, Lord, I don't pray that you take them out because we come to church and we say, Lord, take us out. Jesus says, no, I don't pray that you take them out. He says, I pray that you'll deliver them from the, the evil one. What is the Lord's prayer, which is a daily prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. He says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So it's not always taking us out because You've got to learn. You've got to grow. You've got to build your muscles. So some things we have to go through. The, 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 the pressure defines you. It helps you. It, it helps you realize where you're at so you know what you need to do to go forward. So we get rid of that spirit of, of, of religion within our lives. So, so the first is, 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 is that quick fix mentality. The second is having sensationalism where we want God uh, 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 you know, we, uh, to prove that he loves us. So we're looking for a miracle. We're looking for who, who, and your cell phone number is, tell, tell me, your cell phone number is, is these, is, is oh, 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 God, God, prove you love me. Let the prophet prophesy my cell phone number. <laughs> what is that? Oh, man of God, man of God, man of God. What rubbish is that? Just that posture. 
Just that posture. Just that posture. Is not God. Paul's son. He says my beloved son. He speaks about Timothy. But then he speaks to him about him. He says he says, my co-laborer. Not you up there. Paul is up there and Timothy is down here. Pasta. You talk to me, you say man of God. I say back to you, man of God. You say to me, man of God. I say back to you, woman of God. Don't get caught up in this game the spiritual games where you become dependents. God has come that you might have life. He's come to empower you. Can I get a big amen there? So don't be intimidated. And that's why at 3C, you see, we preach the Bible. That's why it's very difficult to leave. That's why it's very difficult. Because it's not disagreeing with Bert or the culture or it's not. You see, you've got to actually disagree with the Bible. Are you hearing me yet today? And that's why when it comes to faith and that temptation, it is... To test God is to doubt God. To doubt God is not to trust Him. And not to trust Him is sin. And the devil wanted Jesus to distrust the Father. And that's why he he sowed suspicion. And what happens is we come to that place where we want our will rather than God's will. We start living recklessly and carelessly, no accuracy. And then we expect God to bail us out when we're in trouble. And then we start blaming everybody. You'll watch when people don't want to do the Bible. I'm not saying when people want to leave the church. It's when you don't want to do the Bible. Then say Don't tell me your season has passed. (laughs) Just say it straight. I don't love people. I don't want to win souls. I don't want to make disciples. I don't want to grow. All I want is my sins and forgiven. I just want to come. I want my sins forgiven. And I, I want him to keep me healthy and help me not to die and live as long as I can and give me what I want. So when it comes to those things, but now when when you don't get those things because it doesn't work, you don't get those things your way. You've got to do it God's way. God says, okay, I want to bless you, but here is my way. This is what I do. Loving God, loving people. This is how you love people. If they're unsaved, you lead them to to Christ. If they're not saved, and when they saved you, you help them to develop to a place where they can freely give everything they have. Because if you can't give everything, are you truly free? You're not free. If you have to hang on to stuff and try to keep it, are you really free? You're not free. So what happens is when you don't have the faith to believe the Bible, now you blame everybody. And then eventually you blame God. Are you hearing me? And that's why today if we look at the third temptation, verse 8, the devil took him up to exceedingly high mountain, He showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan. Another translation says, be gone, Satan. Say with me, say with me, be gone, Satan. Satan. All right. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and only him you shall serve. And then then the Bible says, and, and, and then the devil left him. And remember when I started the series, ask your neighbor, why hasn't the devil left you? (laughs) 
That's the question. Say these words with me. Away, Satan. Ah. Say with me, be gone, Satan. Okay. I'm getting you to practice those words. So, we see with the third temptation, the devil appeals to our selfish ambitions, trying to use our own devices, our own plans, our own schemes to fulfill the promises of God. So he says, he says, if you were bowed down, he says, everything you see I will give you if you do it, but do it according to the way I want you to do it. Bow down, worship me, follow my plan. And that's why it's trying to fulfill God's plan in Satan's way. What Satan is saying to Jesus is that the world of business, the world of politics, the world of fame, or the world of whatever your heart desires, it can be yours. But now the devil is saying, it can be yours, but if only you bow down, you do it my way. In other words, we can get what we want. He's saying we can fulfill our desires, our fantasies. We can be a somebody, but we've got to do it Satan's way, which is the way of the world. You see, when we set our hearts on prestige, when we set our hearts on money, when we set our hearts on popularity and power and selfish happiness, my right to be happy, it's, you know. <laughs> we are doing exactly what Satan wanted Jesus to do. You put self first, God last. And listen to me, self-will is Satan's will. It's the opposite of God's will. And that's why Matthew chapter 6, 33, what did he say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So know this, that the devil is a counterfeiter. He's the imitator. He copies. So he'll take, it looks like God, but it's the imitation. Some of you might have that currency in your pocket. It looks like the real, but it's fake. Fake currency. It's not true currency. Which means it doesn't really carry. If they put it under the microscope and they say, they say oh, he has 200 rand. No, this is not a real 200 rand. This is a fake 200 rand. You can't buy anything. It's actually just a piece of paper. But it looks like 200 rand. And that's how the devil is. He seems to offer exactly the same what God offers. It looks the same, but his price is cheaper. You think it looks cheaper. See the devil, this is what he's saying to Jesus. God wants you to prosper, doesn't he? Well, you know what? I'll give you the pro prosperity a lot sooner for a lot less. All you have to do all you have to do, all you have to do, bow down, do it my way. Are you hearing me? And that's just how some of these lies are. Come on. Just turn your head away a little. Just, just look the other way when it comes to questionable practices and, and corruption. Come on, somebody. Just this and... and questionable way of doing things. And you can give in to sin as long as it's profitable, as long as it gives you money, as long as it's beneficial. That's what the devil says. The devil says things like, you know what? The, the world says, don't be a prude. Don't be a killjoy. Don't be a spoiled sport. 
Be fun. Be free. You're such a spoiled sport. Why don't you smoke with us? Why don't you take a, a drag? Why don't, you, why don't you have a glass? Why don't you have, come on, why be a spoiled sport? Have, have fun. Be, you're free, not knowing there's a hook, there's a hook there. There's a hook and once he's got you, he's got you. Gotcha. It's just a moment. It's just one time. The world says things like, you know what, everybody does it. Look, everybody does it. You got even some people and sit and say, well, you know what, I hear you, but you know, yeah, well, you're a Christian. Hey, I'm also a Christian. I'm also a Christian, and I don't see anything wrong with it. <laughs> oh, I don't see. I'm also a Christian. Well, I don't know what type of Christian you are. I'm also a Christian. Everybody does it. It's the way to success. And everyone does it, so it must be okay. And that's why when I come to church, I'm, I, I, I put on my, 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 my church hat and I'm all spiritual. Or how are you doing? Oh, hallelujah, God is good all the time. <laughs> and then I get to work, I take off my, 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 my church hat and I put on my business hat. And now, now I can... Don't mix the two. Now. Nah. It doesn't matter what your hat you put on. Your heart's the same. Amen. Wherever you go. That devil that's doing business on a Monday is the same devil that's putting their little daughter to bed at night. You're still the same devil. You might have the father hat on, but your heart is still the devil. And if, your de uh, and if your daughter crosses you, the devil will come out. No, 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 no. We don't play this game. The end justifies the means. Selling your soul to the devil. It says, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. He's demanding your soul. Come on, somebody. But how did Jesus reply? Away! When you identify it and you can see it, and that's why I spend time on that, so that you can identify it, that you can see it, and that when you see it's the devil, that temptation, when you see the hook is there, and that's the problem. You know what's so, so funny is that you've got the hook there, the worm's on. You can still see the hook. No. <laughs> the worm's there. What's the problem? Because your eyes on the worm, you don't see the hook. But you see, when you can recognize it, now you say, be gone, Satan. Away with me, away with you. You shall worship the Lord your God and only him you shall serve. Satan's present power is only by God's permission. And when the son Jesus commanded him to leave. Satan had but no choice but to obey. He is a trespasser. It says, then the devil left him. What? The devil left him. And behold, angels came and ministered to him. The reason why the angels have not come and ministered to you yet is because the devil is still there. You want healing, you want breakthrough, you want reparations, you want restoration, but you want the devil as well. It's only when you say, away, Satan, be gone, Satan. And that's why God gives us the power to resist the devil. James 4, 7 says, therefore submit to 
God, in other words, submit to his will. In other words, that's the decision. God, it's your way, the devil's way. No, I choose God's way. When you have chosen God's way, what do you do? You resist the devil and he will, he will, he will flee. But the problem is we're having conversations with the devil. You're having conversations with the devil like Eve with a snake. Why is she conversing with that snake and not dealing with it like normal people deal with snakes? She was conversing. Do not have a conversation with the devil. Submit and resist. 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 And he will flee. Submit to his will and now resist. Don't converse with the devil. And that's when you hear people start saying stupid things. Things that make no sense. I mean, when I listen to people, and they've, you know, they don't really want to serve the Lord and they've got all their things. You know, the stupidity that comes out of people's minds and things and their theology is if they've studied theology for years and years and years and it's amazing how they interpret the Bible and the things that come out, which is utter rubbish. But that's what happens because the Bible's not complicated. You see, but that's what happens when you are having a conversation with the devil. You say things that make no sense, contrary to the word. Why? You're having a conversation with the devil. But as he did with Jesus, Satan will not stay very long. The Bible says 1 Corinthians 10, 13, for God, every temptation, God will provide a way of escape. With every temptation that Satan leads us into, a way out is provided by the Father. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. So basically, Jesus is saying what? He says, I will trust the Father. I will not bypass his will. I will take the Father's gifts from the Father's own hands in the Father's own way and in the Father's own time. And thus God gets the credit for everything that I go through. No one will ever be able to turn and say, I made Bert Pretorius. No one made you. And even being part of 3C, and I, 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 I really, what can I say? Shanae and I value the love and honor and respect that we get in this church. Let me tell you, there's no church like 3C. Listen to me, listen to me. We, we are really, the love we receive, the value we receive, and you know, so I, 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 I don't want to dismiss that and the role we play within your lives to to, 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 to share the word of God, but still in that, don't think that I make you. No. Or Shanae makes you. Are you hearing me? No, God is setting you up. God is working. All the glory goes to God, and yes, you can honor the role that Shanae and I play within your lives and the role your pastors play within your life and the role your leaders play within your lives. Yes, you honor and you show respect and that's what the Bible teaches us to do. But at the same time, it's not us that make you. It's what God has ordained in your life before the foundation of the world. God's ordained it within your life. Hallelujah. And that's why Matthew chapter 16, we read about Peter. And he says, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Look at verse 19. I will give you the keys of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be 
bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We have the right, we have the authority to bind the works of the devil within our lives, within our families, to resist the devil. And the Bible says that he must flee. Are you hearing me yet today? But what's amazing is after he said this, we come down to Matthew 16 and, and verse 21, and, and Jesus was now telling the disciples, disciples, you know what? This is what's going to happen. I'm going to go die. I've got to go suffer for mankind. This is what's going to happen to me. Then Peter, verse 22, takes him aside. He begins to tell Jesus. He begins to rebuke Jesus. And he says, Lord, you die and suffer. I cancel that negativity. I don't receive those words. They're so negative. They're so, they're so dark. They're so toxic. Come on, somebody. He says, this will not happen to you. You will not suffer, Lord. Hello? Yeah. Then Jesus turns to Peter and says, looks him in the eyes, get behind me, Satan. This is about his suffering. Who would not want to receive a word that you're not going to suffer? <laughs> Somebody comes to you and says, oh, it's, your life is going to be great. You're not going to suffer. And the, and the house and the, the, the money and it's going to come and the health and oh, hallelujah. We want to receive that. Jesus says, I rebuke that. I rebuke that. He says, he says, Excuse me? Excuse me? He says, get behind me, Satan. He says, for you are an offense to me. Are you hearing me? He says, you are an offense. Because you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of, of the world. The things of men. You don't see, you don't have vision. You don't understand the purpose behind. See, so if you understand the motive and the purpose behind what you're doing, that's something different. See, there's a, there's a world's way and there's God's way. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. And then verse 11 says, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. And I want to encourage us. And then, of course, by the way, The same chapter, the same chapter, the same chapter after Jesus conquers temptation, verse 17, from that time, Jesus began to preach. See, this is when, what happens when you conquer temptation. This is when you, what happens when you say, be gone, Satan, removed, and you submit your will to his will. You begin to what? To preach. And he says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then, oops. Say it to me, oops. oops. <laughs> you don't know what the oops is, right? <laughs> Look at verse 18. Then Jesus, walking by the Sea of the Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, Andrew called his brother, casting the net in the sea, for they were fishermen. Verse 19, then he said to them, follow me, become my disciple, and I will make you fishers of men. Become a disciple, and I will teach you to make disciples. Fishers of men. Fishers of men. Then verse 20 says, then they said to Jesus, thank you, Lord. Can we just go pray about it? I need to go decide. I'll think about it and take it into consideration. I will decide. What does it say? 
They? They? They what? Immediately left their nets and followed him. Is this helping you today? Are you so excited? You see, when you get rid of the devil, this is where it takes you. Your capacity grows. When you want to do your own thing, you got small capacity. You even at your best, I'm not even talking in sin, I'm talking you at your best is still small. Little. It's just you. You being awesome. Come on, somebody. Let's not do things like the world wants. That's why with the most people I see, the most people I counsel, the issue is vision. They can't see, they can't see what I see. So they've got to scheme. You scheme, you, you make it happen. That's the world's way. I've realized everything that I make happen hurts me in the end. That's how I grew up. I grew up like that. I grew up ambitious. I grew up in the ministry. I started out ambitious. But the more ambitious I was, the more I hurt people. And what I perceived as success. Until 25 years ago when I gave, Shanae and I gave the church back to Jesus. I said, Lord, we resign as senior pastors. We resign. We give the church back to you. You be the head of the church. We submit to you. Your will be done. We will preach the Bible. We will not preach our opinions. And our goal is to get people to do the Bible. Not to find acceptance. Not to be famous. Not to be known. Not to get money. Nothing. We don't need that. God takes care of us. But everything we do is to fill, fulfill God's will, loving people. And I wanted to encourage us, and I wonder if you can stand to your, to, your, to your feet just there where you are. And my question is, can you see? Or are you like Eve? Your eyes are so focused on what you want, the fruit that you can't eat. You are so focused on what you want, you are conversing with the devil and you don't even know it's the devil. You're just conversing. And what happens, it doesn't take too long and you tie it up. You tie yourself up legally. You tie yourself up in relationships. You tie yourself up with people that, which now holds you, responsibilities that now hold you, which you can't get out of become strongholds within your life and now you're caught up in those things but I want to encourage you that God wants to set you free God wants to help you but for that to happen you've got to get to the place where you know where you're at and say okay this is where I'm at this is where I fell to temptation I've allowed this within my lives and now I've got certain strongholds that I can't just do what I want because it has certain ramifications it affects your finances it affects it, it affects you in your workplace because you're doing corrupt if you don't do corrupt you're fired now because you did you went you submitted to those practices you're part of that now you're part of the sin in your marriage you and your wife because you submitted, you submitted to the evil. So now you're part of it. So I'm not talking about easy, easy. I'm talking about God help me. I don't know how I'm going to do this. That's what I'm talking. But I've got good news for you. God will help you. You're looking at this and you're seeing, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't know how. Let me tell you, God will help you. But you've got to make a decision. I want to. And if you make a decision, I want to, God will give you the wisdom in how to do it.
without being judgmental and, and, and condescending and, and thinking that you're better than people, but God will give you a way of escape. But it starts off by saying, be gone, Satan. In my marriage, be gone, Satan, with my children. Be gone, Satan. My finances, be gone, Satan. My business, be gone, Satan. When it comes to our nation, be gone, Satan. When it comes to our children, our education, be gone, Satan. Be gone. Taking authority in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just there we are, lift up your hands unto the Lord. And Lord, we, we submit ourselves to you. And forgive us, Lord, for allowing the devil and having submitted to temptation. But we've done this. We're done, Lord. We're done. And some of us are caught up in sin. We're caught up. Some of us are addicted to certain things within our lives because we allowed this within our lives. Some were at the stage. We allowed this within our life. But Lord, we give it over to you out of ourselves. We can't conquer out of ourselves. We don't know how we're going to overcome. We hear, yeah, Lord, we say we need you in our lives, Lord. But we make a decision. We see, we see, we see these things. We see it. We've got vision. We see how we are tied up. We see how, how, Lord, we see how we are embattled. We see, Lord, how our family's embattled. Lord, we see this and we're not going to make excuses anymore. But now we're going to say, away with you, Satan. Just there, start lifting up your voices. Say, away with you, Satan. Away with you, Satan. Away with you, Satan. Come on, lift up your voices. In our marriage, away with you, Satan. We bind your works in the name of Jesus. You've got no right over our families. You've got no right over my marriage. You've got no right over my children. You've got no right over my grandchildren. You've got no right over my finances. You've got no right over my future. You've got no right over our workplace. Be gone, Satan. Away with you, Satan. You've got no right. We bind you in the name of Jesus. We take authority over you in the name of Jesus. Be gone. You've got no right over my body. You've got no right over my health. You've got no right over my future. You've got no right over my mental capacity. You've got no right over my emotions. You've got no right over my mind. You've got no right over my will. I bind your works. I bind your works. Be gone, Satan. Be gone, Satan. Away with you, Satan. You've got no right. You take your hands off our nation. You take your hands off our government. You take your hands off our city. We find your works in the name of Jesus. Be gone, be gone, be gone, be gone. Hallelujah. I thank you for the breakthrough. Come and give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, lift up your hands. Just stay where you're in. Hallelujah. He says, and he will send his angels to minister. Just there where you are, the Holy Spirit ministers healing to you. Ministers healing to that heart, that broken heart. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what your circumstances, and whether it was your fault, whether it's not your fault, that's irrelevant. It's irrelevant today. As you have resisted the devil, the Holy Spirit will bring healing to your marriage. He'll bring healing to your family, bring healing to your children, healing to your finances, healing to your future. And just let the Holy Spirit, let the angels minister to you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're in control. Hallelujah. And just there you are, start thanking the Lord. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I receive I receive unity, whatever it is in your life. Come and say what it is. I receive breakthrough. I receive unity. I receive peace. I receive tranquility. I receive a calmness in my spirit. I receive emotional well-being, mental well-being. Come on, just there we are. You receive it right now. I see you. I receive health. There you go. I receive breakthrough in my business, in my life right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, just receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. It is done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You minister to your people. It is done. It is done. Jesus' name, hallelujah. Take your right hand and put it on the person next to you, just there where you are. And I want you to minister to their lives. Come on. Come on, just pray with them. One, two, three, pray. Hallelujah. Oh, we minister life, Lord. 
Amen. We minister grace, you Lord. We minister your joy, your joy, your joy. We minister your peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Your peace beyond all understanding, Lord. Your joy unspeakable but full of glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Breakthrough, Lord. Healing, Lord. Restoration. Reconciliation. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, speak life, speak life, speak life. Oh, we speak the word. We speak breakthrough. Oh, we speak. Oh, we speak your will be done, Lord, as it is in heaven be done in their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done in Jesus' name. It is done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come and give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. It is done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If there's somebody here today, you've not yet given your life to Jesus. That's where it starts. You can't claim to say our father if you're not his son or that his child. Unless a man is born again. Unless you're born again, you cannot receive. We cannot be a child of God. That means you repent. You turn away from your life and say, I'm done with that life. I come now to Jesus. God will come place his spirit within you and he will change you out of yourself. You can't change. You can't do anything. You can't. You can modify your behavior to a certain degree through discipline, but you can't change your heart. You are who you are. But if you invite God into your life, he'll change you. That's why while every head is bowed, every eye is closed and you say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Maybe you've never done it before. Maybe you've done it, but you backslidden. You moved away from God. But if that's you, quickly slip up your hand. I want to pray with you. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. His hands going up all over. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You can put your hands down. Thank you. I want to ask one more time because you might think, okay, well, you know, I don't have to do it today. Don't have to do it. You've got no guarantee. First of all, you'll be alive tomorrow. Don't be. Let's, let's, let none of us be arrogant. Let none of us be arrogant. That's why we live with eternal perspective. Is your life right with God? Secondly, you might leave this place and never be in the place of faith or atmosphere of the Spirit again. But you, you leave this place, but one day you'll stand before God, 30 years from now, whatever. God will say, remember that Sunday morning I spoke to you, you rejected me. Don't miss God. I'm going to ask one more time. If you never raise your hand, you want to do it, quickly slip it up now. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I see those hands. You can put it down. Thank you so much. Now, I wonder if you can do one more thing for me. If you raised your hand, I need to do a personal prayer with you. I want you to grab your belongings. Don't leave it on the chair. Quickly come out in the aisles. Quickly come stand in front. Quickly.
bowed, every eye closed, pray this prayer after me. Say to me, Heavenly Father, I need you in my life. Today I repent. Turn from my old life. Done with my old life. I come to you. And I give you my life. Everything that I am, I surrender unto you. Please forgive my sin, Lord. Take out this old nature. Fill me with your spirit. And as I give my life to you, according to your word, you say that I become a child of God. And thank you, Lord. As from now, I can say, I am a child of God. I belong to you. And nothing can snatch me out of your hands. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for each and every person that prayed this prayer. Every power of the devil broken over their lives. Every curse removed. Set them free from their past. And as from now, they belong to you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at PO Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.